Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathic Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today we'll be doing another important topic, that is the totality of symptoms. Well, it is divided into totally six parts. So let us see what the first part has. Well, the full topic of totality of symptoms will be divided as follows. The organ on reference, the definition, views by view by different authors, the type of totality, different sources of totality, how to form the totality, and most important, it's homeopathic, it's importance in homeopathic prescribing. So let us see one by one, slowly and steadily, in all these six parts. So part one, that is organon reference. Well, the reference is given in the sixth edition of Organon, written by Dr. Samuel Hanneman, aphorism number six and seven. So aphorism number six states, all these perceptible signs represent the disease in its whole extent. That is, together, they form the true and only conceived the portrait of the disease. So Dr. Hanneman says that whatever perceptible signs are there, that means whatever you can perceive, in its whole extent, together they form the full totality. After number seven, the totality of symptoms is the outwardly reflected picture of the internal essence of the disease, that is the affection of the vital force. So in after number seven, it says that it is the outwardly reflected picture of the internal essence of the disease. Essence meaning the most important part of the disease or what is the core of the disease. That is the, what are the characteristic signs and symptoms. So basically in totality, we have to see the outwardly reflective picture of the internal essence of the disease. That is the important characteristic of PQRS symptoms. It is the principle of the sole means whereby the disease can be made known what remedies requires. The only thing that can determine the choice of the most appropriate remedy. So again, once again, Dr. Hanneman reminds you that the totality of the symptom is the sole means by which you can determine the choice of the most appropriate remedy. Thus, the totality of symptoms must be the principle, indeed the only thing the physician has to take note of in every case of disease and to remove by means of his art in order that it shall be cured and transformed into health. So again, once again, he's reminding you that the totality of the symptoms is the only way whereby you can cure the disease and you can remove the disease by means of his art. So the physician should be artistic. He must know exactly what to take and what to leave out. So this is the art of homeopathy. Once you master the art of homeopathy, then the disease shall be cured and it can be transformed into health. Well, in simple terms, the totality of symptoms is not an aggregate of merely the numerical totality. Numerical meaning all the symptoms of the case. It constitutes the characteristics of an individual on the mental, physical and particular pains, plane. So basically, it is not the numerical totality, but whatever symptoms we have, from there we have to decipher which symptoms are PQRS, character, characteristic, singular, uncommon, rare, peculiar, queer, or strange? On which level? On the mental level, on the physical level, as well as on the particular level or the particular plane. So basically, in short, the totality of the symptoms is the characteristic symptoms of an individual on the mental, physical, and particular plane. In other words, the total of symptoms is the sum of the characteristics of the individual obtained from life situation right from birth to its grave in its evolutionary sequence. So basically, when we form the totality or when we trace the totality, it is the sum of the characteristics of the individual. So we have to find out what characteristics the individual has or what are the characteristic signs and symptoms. So for that, we have to trace the picture of the disease right from birth till the patient sees you or till the patient's death in its evolutionary sequence. That means right from birth till the time he sees you at your clinic, what are the different evolutionary march of events which are occurring in the patient's life? 
we have to correctly perceive the persona of the patient. Well, persona in ancient Greek word meaning the mask. Therefore, we have to know the man behind the mask, that is the inner perception. So basically, all of us, we have a different persona. And when we are in society, we behave very, in, a, in a very nice manner. But our actual feelings or actual behavior is in a form of a mask. We do not show that particular type of behavior in society. Only we show it when we are with friends or with our family members. So basically, the persona meaning that the mask is there, the mask has to be unmasked, then only you can find out the true personality of the patient. Now, let us see the views by different authors. So by Dr. Hanneman, Dr. Hanneman calls the totality of symptoms as the portrait of the disease phenomena. So Dr. Hanneman compares it to a portrait. So what is a portrait basically? It is nothing but an artistic impression of an objective reality. It is the creation of the mind. Portrait is defined as the total representation of the patient that is a subjective, that is a subjective feeling of the subjective symptoms and depicts the emotional state of the individual. So whatever the patient is feeling, that symptoms we have to take. So the patient will narrate to you whatever he is feeling. That is the subjective symptoms. And naturally, whatever he is feeling, it naturally it will, it will be on a level of the emotional state of the individual. Thus, the physician has to be artistic in order to bring out certain emotional shades of the patient. So therefore, if you want to identify the correct or the different emotional shades of the patient, the, the physician has to be an artist. He must he, he should know exactly which color to take and, and how to paint it and what to do about it. So similarly, when a physician is confronted with the patient and we take the interview, so the physician should be like an artist. He must know what are the different shades of the patient or the emotional shades of the patient so that he can find the correct remedy. In short, the portrait, we mean the disposition of the patient. So basically, we have to see the disposition of the patient or we have to perceive the disposition of the patient. So just to go back again, a portrait basically will be now when someone draws a portrait or a painter draws a portrait, he will only paint or he will only draw those lines which will, which will be depictive, depictive of the individual. Okay, so we can identify immediately that this portrait is of this person, this portrait is of a X or Y or Z person. So the portrait will, will only have the characteristic lines which will identify the individual. Whereas a picture will have all the lines, both characteristic and which are also not characteristic. And it will also and we'll be able to also to identify the picture or the person in the picture. So a picture has both the characteristic as well as the uncharacteristic lines or the symptoms, whereas a portrait will only have those characteristic lines which will depict the individual. So that's the difference between a portrait and a picture. Well, Dr. Kent has to say, the totality of symptom is the image or the picture of the patient. So Kent calls it as an image or picture. The image represents all the symptoms which are characteristic in nature. So out here, Kent says that the image is there, but that image will only contain all the symptoms which are characteristic in nature. The mental symptoms pertaining to will, emotion, intellect, and subconscious are of prime importance. So he tells you, Dr. Kent tells you that we have to take the characteristic symptoms. These characteristic symptoms represent the image of the picture of the patient, which in turn re represents the totality. So on the mental level, we have to go see the will, the emotion, the intellect, and the subconscious. So these four are the most important subclassification of mental symptoms given by Dr. Kent. It is then followed by the generals, then the particulars, and lastly, the pathology. So then we have to take the physical general symptoms, the physical particular symptoms, and lastly, the pathology, if any. So this forms the image of the picture or the totality of symptoms according to Dr. Kent. Now, according to Dr. George Vitulkas, he says 
the essence of the case forms the totality of the symptoms. By the word essence, we mean the basic or the most important idea or quality of something. So basically, in a case, we have to see what does the case revolve around or what is the core of the case? What is the essence of the case? In his book, The Essence of Materia Medica, he had described the essence of many homeopathic drugs. For example, he had said that the essence of natrum mu is grief. So grief forms the core or the essence of the drug of natrum mu around which everything will re revolve around. So therefore, George Vithulkas says that we have to identify the essence or the essence forms the totality of the case. Margaret Lucy Taylor, who was a follower of Dr. Kent or Kent student, she said the totality of symptoms is represented by the word genius. It means the highly characteristic and red line symptoms in the materia medica running through the whole pathogenesis of the remedy. So the genius of the remedy are the characteristic symptoms or the red line. Red line meaning very important symptoms which run throughout the drug and as well as the pathogenesis of the remedy. It is aimed at clearing, at creating a clear and distinct conceptual image of the remedy in the minds of the reader. So once you get the highly characteristic red, red line symptoms which run throughout the drug, then we get a clear and distinct conceptual image of the remedy in the minds of the reader. For example, arsenic album, the important highly characteristic and red line symptoms which run throughout the materia medica are desires, death, burning pains, better by hot application, midnight and midday aggravation, and great weakness associated with all the complaints. So this is an example. Dr. M. L. Dhavle, Dr. Dhavle Kole correlates the total of symptoms as the conceptual image of the patient, of the person. So Dr. Dhavle has given the word as conceptual image. Totality is nothing but the conceptual image. The conceptual image is defined as, it is the individualized image derived by the homeopathic physician of a disease, either natural or drug induced from a formless mass of data that is the symptom. So what is the conceptual image? It is the individualized image derived by the homeopathic physician of a disease. So when a patient is in a disease condition, the conceptual image is formed by taking into account the characteristic symptoms, either of the natural disease or the drug-induced disease from a formless mass of data. So we are getting too many symptoms or many symptoms which pertain to the disease, either natural or drug-induced. So these do not have any form. That means what? They are mixed. The common symptoms are mixed with the characteristic symptoms. The less important symptoms are mixed with the more important symptoms and so on and so forth. So basically, from this formless mass of data, we have to individualize it and bring out the conceptual image that is the characteristic signs and symptoms. Therefore, conceptual image is a logical representation of the data or the symptoms by generalization, individualization, causation and concomitant. So therefore, we have to, whatever symptoms are there, we have to use inductive and deductive logic and we have to use the process of generalization, individualization, causation and the importance of the concomitant symptoms. Now let us see a bit more in detail, what does it include? So the conceptual image, image will include, first is the cause, that is the ailments from, if any, if you get in a case, then the precipitating factors, that is the emotional and the physical factors, hereditary miasms, that is the fundamental cause, if any suppression is there, any vaccinations, diathesis and temperament. So all this will constitute the cause. Then the circumstances of aggravation and amelioration, that is the modalities. Then the sensation and complaints in general, the mental state, in mental state, the feeling state, that is, the emotion, anger, sad, fear, impulsive behavior, etc., and symptoms of intellect, that is the perception, formulation, memory, and discrimination. Then the characteristic particulars or the keynote symptoms, sensation as if, peculiar, queer, rare, strange symptoms. So all these symptoms will form the characteristic particulars. And lastly, the pathological general. So all this forms the conceptual image according to Dr. Dhavle. So that's all in this video.
the part two will be coming up next. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.